DaVinci Resolve 17 has been out in public beta for a little over a month now, and I will already say this is probably one of my favorite updates for any NLE I have ever used. With tons of new features that I believe deserve its own dedicated series of videos, today I am going to narrow down to three features that I personally use, but very different on how they probably were intended. What's going on everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, which judging by the algorithm 90% of you are, I say welcome. On this channel I give tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the video and filmmaking industry. If you like the content, please subscribe to my channel and hit the likes. The likes absolutely help out and get my content out to more people. And hit the bell so you can stay up to date on all the videos I put out. As mentioned at the top of the video, these are some massive changes to resolve and new features that I can talk for hours on. But today I am going to focus on three features that I use in my day-to-day -day workflow, but not in the way you probably were intended. Some of these features can be used for everyone and some are for more for my fellow YouTubers, which I dare say could finally persuade them to end their subscriptions with Adobe Creative Cloud. So. Let's begin. The first isn't relatively new if you have been following my channel since the Blackmagic Design announced Resolve 17, but it is something I have now used almost every video I edit, whether it's for my YouTube channel or it's for clientele pay gigs. And that is the high dynamic range wheels. Now, the original intention of these wheels was to give further controls to those who work in the HDR delivery. But what I have found is that these controls are so good, even for SDR grading, that I actually use them over the traditional log wheel tab when working alongside my primaries. You can add the HDR wheel before and after to make extremely fine tuning adjustments to both highly, uh, to, to both your highly, uh, the highlights and, sh and shadows uh, exposures, but as well as saturations in specific portions of the image. You can move the different tabs anywhere you like to make sure you are working in the portion of the image you want. Control how much roll off you want on your tab to affect as well as add more tabs to give yourself even more control. This feature has honestly changed the way my grading has become and allowing me to make my images how I want. So. HDR wheels for HDR grading is a major win for me. The second item on my list is the Smart Reframe. Now, the original intention of the Smart Reframe was to offer a way to make the subjects you're filming in always in frame even if you decide to make multiple videos using different aspect ratios, like one by one for Instagram videos or nine by 16 for vertical content. And the program is insanely good at knowing which subject to keep in frame and even still, you manually select the subject you would like the smart frame reframe to focus on, and it will focus. But what I have discovered is that this is a great tool as an alternative stabilization method for higher resolution images. So if you're using something that is shooting in say 6K or 8K or even above like 12K, uh, or you're using a 4K uh, video clip uh, to deliver to full HD, you can use the smart reframe to focus on your subject and also stabilize the image. What potentially makes this a better option than the warp stabilization that is built into Resolve is because it uses keyframes to form the stabilization and not manipulating the image itself, which decreases the chances of like weird warping or weird imagings that will happen when you're doing those type of stabilizations. But more importantly, uh, this isn't so process intensive. So if you're using a computer that is not necessarily top specs, this is a potential way to stabilize your footage without melting your computer. Now, the potential downside is that because it's using keyframes, this could potentially have situations where the smart reframe may be confused and you could get awkward movements and jitters, but overall, my experience using the Smart Reframe to stabilize my 8K video has been stellar and provides just as good, if not 
better stabilized footage compared to the built-in stabilization minus pulling down my computer's uh, performance. The last and final feature I love using from, the, from its original tension is the magic mask. If you are a fellow YouTuber, this is something you may want to pay attention to. Now, the magic mask is probably one of the more exciting features of Resolve 17. If you do not know, magic mask is essentially a rotoscoping method that is now built into the color tab where it uses smart technology to mask out subjects from the background. And it does it so well and so efficiently. Now, because it uses the nanotechnology in Resolve, this feature is only available for the studio version and not the free version. But this feature is so good at finding subjects as well as tracking them that you can use this feature to get perfect skin tones without worrying about affecting the background. Now, the major downside of the Magic Max that I have experienced and many other people have is that it is very process heavy and it will likely slow your computer down dramatically when you start tracking the subject through your clip. Now, if you're asking why is this feature such a big hit for me, given its downsides? Well, there is a way of using this feature without having to deal with the intensive processing. And I will go as far as to say this method I'm about to reveal may sway some YouTubers and content creators away from Adobe CC. So what is it that I'm talking about? Making thumbnails. Yes, thumbnails. For those of us who provide a stream of income and are trying to find ways to draw people's attention to our content, thumbnails is probably one of the key important features of drawing people to your content. For me, this was always a pain for me to do, especially since I left Adobe a while ago. I would finish my video and resolve, then I would have to hop over to GIMP, a free Photoshop-like app, try to mask out uh, the pictures, add in whatever I'm discussing, export the picture out, then upload the picture to YouTube. And GIMP, while a great app given that it's free, does not have the best masking features in my opinion, but it is good enough to do the job. But now with Magic Mask, I don't need to ever leave Resolve for any point of the project. So how is it done? Well, it's actually quite simple. You take your clip or image that you will be using for the Magic Mask and freeze frame it. If you're using a clip, that is, then you will want to make your way to the color tab and the node section and you want to first add an alpha channel that will drag to the alpha out point to the alpha channel. Next, you will head over to the magic mask and then draw a line down the subject you want to mask. I would suggest using the better tab as the faster tab, not as accurate. Because we are basically using only one frame, we don't need to process the whole image. So once you got your magic mask to be the level where you are satisfied with, you can go back to the edit page and add the background frame below the subject frame and you will see the alpha frame on top. Now you just have to place the alpha frame where you wish it to be. Once that is done, then you simply create a compound clip and then finally go back to the color tab, select the compound clip, then right click on the monitor and add a still image to the gallery. And then once your image is added, you can then right click the image and select export and voila, you have a thumbnail image ready to be uploaded with your YouTube video. Honestly, this is now one of my favorite tools. Anything to keep me from going from multiple apps to another is always a major win for me. And now, seeing that I can essentially do a Photoshop edit, in air quotes, uh, right inside of Resolve for my thumbnails, is only making the $300 price tag for the studio version a steal. It's worth every penny and then some. But there you have it. These are the three unorthodox uh, tricks of using the new Resolve 17 features. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please leave a like and subscribe. If there is questions or other things you wish to know about Resolve 17, leave the comments down below. And until next time, take care everyone.